the times when you're most uncomfortable are the inflection points in your life. The discomfort is how you know you are changing. Hey, yeah. flipping the script for my old ways. Always. Took up a switch, I'm in flow state. flow state. Commas, I'm going through grown pains. Grown pains. I wasn't used to shit being so gross. I tighten the threads out of crochet. I actually don't care about being a 10x engineer. Not that it's not important, I know I am. But what I care about now is being a 10x startup founder. And for that, the only thing that matters is this. Can I write good code fast? and ship it to the customers consistently. Wake up the cushion, some OJ. The last tape I dropped was a rollway. In this episode of Project Runway, I want to show you how I 10x my output without burning out and without destroying the code quality. And this works whether you are just started learning how to code and building a startup, a professional engineer, or in an awesome star engineer territory. <laughs> If you're bootstrapping, you don't win by perfect architecture. You win by output. By learning faster than user churns, shipping, listening, fixing, and shipping again. Let's start with beginners. If you're coding your own startup right now, it's probably because you don't have a tech co-founder yet or you don't want to outsource. And you probably already ran into a wall called Vibe Coding. You prompt the AI build something and it's never what you really want. You just see the code growing, but somehow things got worse. Here's the mistake. You're prompting your full vision all at once. AI is not good at building at scale yet. It gets confused as the context grows and the quality drops. Let's say you want to build a Tinder for rescue animals. So you want membership, AI matching, and maps plus shelters. Don't do this. Don't prompt all of it. Start really small, really dumb. Use an AI builder like Lovable to build a single search bar for nearby shelters. Or just a login plus subscription. Then download the code, open locally in cursor. Now you're in control. Now you can start building one feature at a time with real-time feedback. Make sure you focus on one feature at a time and one task at a time. Plan, then implement. Start really, really small. Don't go to the edge of your imagination. Focus on building something shippable and minimal. If you're a professional engineer, here's the bottleneck. You're just one person with one active agent. Cursor or cloud code is powerful, but it's still one work stream. So I stopped thinking in terms of tools and started thinking in terms of parallelism. I don't run one agent, I run multiple. Cursor is my active agent, cloud code runs in parallel in the background. When it writes features, when it writes tests and refactors. The trick is get work trees. Each agent gets its own work tree, same repo, same machine, no conflicts. If you want to go crazy, run Docker containers, separate clones, create PRs to yourself. There's one more reason I care so much about maximizing coding agents. It's not just about shipping fast. When I was deep in the code all the time, I was exhausted, not just physically, mentally, because I knew I was neglecting the other 90% of the startup. Go to market, sales outreach, talking to users, thinking clearly about where this is going. And here's the trap a lot of technical founders fall into. We tell ourselves, once the tech is done, I'll focus on the rest. But the tech is never done. So you dig deeper, you zoom in harder. This is not a good idea because I should be looking for distribution channels. Learning how to use coding agent to my advantage changed that for me. Because suddenly, work stopped being blocked by implementation. I wasn't stuck anymore waiting for myself to finish coding. Features move forward without consuming all my mental energy. The biggest win isn't speed, it's space. Space to think about distribution, sales outreach, talking to customers, and look at the bigger picture. That's what agents give me now. That's why I want to share all of this. Now let me show you how I'm pushing this even further with context engineering. Now, star engineers already know how to ship. Your problem isn't skill, it's context loss. When people say the agent forgot everything, it's not really what's happening. What's happening is token pressure, task drift, and objective misalignment. Usually about 20 to 40 minutes, contacts start leaking. After big code blocks, it gets worse. And if you're switching tasks, it's almost guaranteed the agent remembers what to do, but forgets why. So I stopped fighting it, trying to remind it the context. I started designing for it. 
Everything starts with the project brain. One file the agent always reads. This prevents so much hallucination. Every task, planning, implementation starts with reading the project brain and only the relevant part. So instead of long context and get confused by it, I send only the most relevant information to the LLM. Try to plan first and then iterate on small changes. No big bang code. This might feel slow at first, but it will help you execute way faster because you don't have to go back and forth correcting things. There are tools that helps with this, like Ref and Exa, but I built my own MCP server. Fully private, super fast because it's local, and completely free. Perfect for bootstrap startups. It's an auto query rag MCP server. It retrieves only the relevant information from the documentations and serve it to the agent through context protocol. And you know what's cool? I'm using my own open source vector database. It's a vector index WASM building Rust. It allows the agent to search for relevant information semantically. What I want to know is if I open sourced it, would you use it? Let me know in the comments. I like it. Um, it, it is a issue that internally we've been struggling to do for a while. And yeah, what you showed me was kind of kind of perfectly in line with what I'm doing right now, actually. I work with Strimba, the Learn to Code platform, and exploring kind of the organic, authentic uh, marketing strategies rather than focusing on like the sales, corporate things. I feel like the landscape of uh, marketing has changed um, to be, you know, a bit more genuine, authentic. And it's pretty hard to nail, I think. So definitely need a strategy, but I guess that's the hard part. If you have a strategy, you win, but not everyone can make a good one. And if you're building something right now, it's awesome. Keep building, keep shipping. And I hope that this video helped you ship faster and better to your customers.